Earlier this summer, I installed this mini split heat pump. It's been air conditioning this garage and it's actually been working really well. It has surprised me at just how efficient this thing has actually been running. But since that video, I've received a ton of questions from all of you asking, can I install a mini split like this in my RV or school bus conversion or tiny house or trailer? And the answer is yes, but you're gonna need one thing. <clears throat> and that's this. Now this is a transformer and I'm gonna show you exactly how the wiring works and why so that in your 120 volt RV, you can run a 240 volt appliance. Here we go. This device is called an isolation transformer. This is going to allow us to run a 240 volt appliance off of 120 volts. Most RVs or van conversions or tiny houses, they're gonna be running on 120 volts only. Even the ones that will have a 50 amp plug that kinda of looks like a dryer plug or a stove plug, uh, they'll still run only 120 volts internally. And the reason for that is because these RVs will often use adapters because some of the RV parks that they go to will only offer 120 volt 30 amp outlets. So the adapters uh, will take the 120 volts and feed it to both sides of the circuit breaker box inside the RV. So they don't run anything that is 240 volts. So it's important to keep this in mind. Now, of course, you personally could build out your entire electrical system if you're building it up from scratch. But for the purposes of this video, let's focus on people who already have an RV that is 120 volt only and you wanna add a 240 volt appliance like this mini split that I have up here in the garage. Uh, one of the main reasons that I'm really excited about them is because I don't like having a bunch of stuff on the roof of an RV. The people who have talked with me about doing RV conversions, I try to get all that stuff off the roof to maximize as much wattage of solar panels as possible up on the roof of the van or RV or tiny house. So let's change cameras now and we're gonna look at this transformer and then we're gonna mock it up and get a meter on it and then actually run my mini split with this transformer off of 120 volts. This is the transformer that I bought. Now I bought it used to save some money and you can find these on Craigslist, eBay and Facebook Marketplace. This particular transformer is called an isolation transformer. Now it's single phase and it's an isolation transformer, meaning there's a primary side and a secondary side. There's an iron core that separates the two. This means that there's no electrical contact between this side and this side, the primary and secondary. This means that we'll be able to feed 120 volts into the primary and get 240 volts out. Now this is a one-to-one -one transformer. So you can do 120 by 240 to 120 by 240 or any combination, meaning you could feed it with 240 and get 120 out, or you could feed it with 120, 240 and get 120, 240 out if your only goal is isolation. Now you can also use a step up or step down transformer where it might only have 120 on one side and 240 on the other. That will work also. This just happens to be the model that I was able to find used. Now this is a 2KVA. Now, among friends, let's just call that 2000 watts. We're gonna be well under that. My particular mini split, I've never seen go over 800 watts, so this is more than double the capacity that we'll need. First thing to do, we'll go ahead and take this cover off so that we can see inside the electrical box. This part here is gonna be hollow, and the transformer is the upper half. Now I did say that I got this one used and you can see that the previous person used a bunch of these little clips. I think they're called Wago. All right, so we have a grounding stud and then we're gonna have these different wires. So there's gonna be two halves, a primary and secondary. In this particular case, the primary is gonna be labeled with the H. We're gonna come down here and see that's H4. So each one of these is labeled as H something. H1, 
and it's coming, this bundle is coming out from down here at the bottom of the transformer, and out the top of the transformer is another bundle of wire, and these are going to be all labeled in X. So we have X2. See, the X2. Now for our purposes, we know that we want to feed 120 volts in and get 240 volts out. So this is going to be the primary and this is going to be secondary. Now right on the sticker it tells us what to do. Right here, 120 volts, H1 to H3 and H2 to H4. So this wire is labeled as H1. This is H3. And it says right on the label to connect H1 to H3. So we're going to connect those. Now I, I put these together with a triple uh, instead of using one of the doubles. And I did that because this is where we're going to need to tap in for one of the lines feeding the transformer. And then up here on the label, it says connect H2 to H4. So we're going to do that. And then on the secondary for 240 volts out, it says connect X2 to X3. And then our lines out are going to be the X1 and X4. So these are connected with triples. So this is where we're going to tap in a 120 volt cord. And then over here on the output, it says for 240 volts, connect X2 to X3. Well, we did that. That's right here. X2 and X3 are connected. And I used a double here because we don't need a neutral. We don't need to tap this off. Now, you, if you need 120 and 240 on the output, you could tap off from that. That's the center point. That would be right here, the center point. And you'd have a neutral, but we're not doing that. We're going to tap off of these two, which will give us just straight 240. So we have X4 and X1. So these are going to be 240 volts out, and these are the 120 in. Now this is just an old plug cord that I'm going to use. Nothing special to it. This is our 120 volt plug. And when we come in here with our two lines, we have our hot line and our neutral. It doesn't actually matter which side we go to on which Wago. So I ran some Romex into the junction box here. This Romex is what I'm going to use to go to the mini split outside. Now this is not outdoor rated or anything. This is all just very temporary just to show you how you can use a transformer. Now if I wanted to I could run these directly in to the Wago connections of the secondary side of the coil. But I want to add in between there a meter. <laughs> so by using a meter we'll be able to see the output and there's a meter that I can plug in on here to see the input. That way we can actually see how much power the transformer is consuming because there's no free lunch here. All right, so let's go ahead and get this on. So we have the transformer on there. So one side on that and this side over here. Let's go ahead and shorten these up a little bit. just threw a blue eddy up here. Let's give it a test. Just has to boot. And our battery is 100%. So let's go ahead and turn. We'll turn on AC output. Now remember the output is the yellow and I taped off the ends. And let's go ahead and plug this in. Okay, I'm gonna plug this in. So right here, we have zero watts going out, 244 volts, 60 hertz. And over here, it 
it says 288 watts. That sounds really high. Doesn't sound right. I would have expected this transformer to be a lot less than 288. So I have another device to check this. So let's check another device. So I just plugged in this meter. Let's check it now. So 72 watts is, is much more in line with what I was expecting for an isolation transformer. So I don't know why the Blue Eddy is reading so far off, but that's fine. All right, so now we at least know that this side of things works. We have 240 volts out. So now we'll take this stuff outside to the mini split. We are wired in. These two wires were from this, which is disconnected, and I turned off the circuit breaker, so we don't have any power there. Inside we have our yellow wire. That's coming from the isolation transformer, going to L1 and L2. All right. So at this point, we can turn on the Blue Eddy, turn on the AC output. Right there, we can see the watts. I just heard a relay click inside there. We can see that right now it's using 15 watts or so, which will, uh, this type of device will always use some amount of wattage uh, just to keep the remote on, on the inside, the remote sensor. Right now it's going through a check, probably 21. 96 watts. I want to see if this actually ramps up. I had it on before I turned off the circuit breaker, so it might just automatically kick on. We are currently inside the garage. That's the inside head unit, and over here is the remote. So let's turn down the temperature. It's in air conditioning mode right now. So as you can see, air conditioning mode in 61 degrees. That'll kick it up to high speed. All right, let's head back outside and see what it's drawing. Okay, this unit's been running for about 10 minutes now, so I think it's kind of balanced out. It's pulling 608 watts, and over here, 690 watts. So about 80 watts or so being consumed in the isolation transformer. Uh, so just kind of interesting how these things work. But there's the exact one that I have. Well, there you have it. It works. We're running a full-size mini-split heat pump off of a Blue Eddy portable power unit. Now this is putting out 120 volts. It's currently supplying about six amps to the isolation transformer. And then the mini-split is using 240 volts and about three amps. So we're having the amps, but we're doubling the voltage. I think this is so cool. These transformers are, I mean, it's kind of like magic, the way that it can do this. I just think it's really awesome. So I think this is a viable solution for anybody who's running a 120 volt RV or camper and they want a mini split heat pump, this is an option. The Blue Eddy was able to power the mini split just fine. Now one of the reasons for this is that the mini split is a 9000 BTU unit, so it doesn't draw a whole lot of power even when running full blast. Now if you have a larger mini split, you might have to be careful, you might have to up the size of your uh, isolation transformer. Now this being a 2 kVA, it's perfectly suited for this size mini split. The other reason is that this mini split uses an inverter drive for the compressor. Now some compressors don't have an inverter drive and they, when they turn on, there's a real big spike that you have to be careful of. It can overload and shut down some small inverters. Now in those situations, the isolation transformer also helps because something about this has to do with magnetic flux, and I've read it described as kind of a flywheel effect, but it helps smooth out those surges so the inverter doesn't see the big spike the same way that the uh, isolation transformer will. It kind of blends it out. But remember, the isolation transformer drew 70 watts when it was just on the bench, and 80 watts while the mini split was pulling full load. So there's a loss. So you have to take that into account. So if you decide to go this way, 
uh, running something like an, a mini split for air conditioning, you might want to position the isolation transformer outside of the cabin of the vehicle uh, or RV or whatever, like down in one of the storage bays. It's not going to be putting out a ton of heat. It's fairly small. Uh, but any amount of heat that you can keep out of the cabin is less BTUs that the uh, mini split has to then remove and put back into the outside environment. Now this particular isolation transformer is rated to be outside. It's a totally sealed and encapsulated unit. Not all of them are that way. Uh, but you're also going to find different efficiency levels. Now the auto transformer that I've used in some of my previous videos, it has less uh, loss because it's an auto transformer, not an isolation transformer. So you always could use an auto transformer to do this same task. Uh, but this was 50 bucks <laughs> off of Craigslist and the auto transformer is $350, something like that. So it's fun to know that you can repurpose something uh, that has served its life already for somebody else. Now transformers don't have any moving parts and not much to go wrong. So buying a used one off of Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or eBay, uh, really I have no trouble doing that. I, I've bought several used ones and they've all worked for me. <laughs> so uh, make sure you check them for continuity uh, to ground, make sure there's no short, uh, but otherwise they should all work just fine even on the used market. So thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.